and uh, it's really quite different from CouchDB. It maybe has more in common with MemcacheD. Uh, and a uh, little bit about when you would use it. You want it when you have to be fast, right? Fast matters because users like fast stuff. Um, so we had Cisco do this benchmark where they couldn't get it to be slower than half a millisecond for response times. Um, this is with large objects, small objects, bad network cards, good network cards. We're talking like, you know, a, a few microseconds, maybe like 300 microseconds for the slow stuff. Um, and the throughput on a five node cluster is, you know, something like 1.75 million operations per second. So that's also pretty fast. Um, it's a whole different world from what I'm used to. When I was working on Apache CouchDB, you know, fast wasn't really what we were going for. We're going for all these other exciting things. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I'm learning a lot. And uh, just a, a little bit more so that you know what you're getting into if you ever decide to play around with Couchbase. Right? Part of the se selling point is that you can go from three nodes to 10 nodes to 50 nodes without missing a beat. Um, it's real important if you have an app that's going to blow up and you don't know when, because you can't launch it on 50 nodes. That's too expensive. Um, but you also can't have everything crash and burn uh, when the load actually comes. You know, when those users show up that day, that's the day that it really matters. Um, so the uh, adding servers is as easy as launching some Amazon instances or whatever, hooking them up to the local network tying them in and then pressing the rebalance button and your data goes like that and your app servers know to look in the new place. Um, so the last little thing about the tech, it runs with the multi-data center magic that you're probably used to from CouchDB uh, but at much larger scale. So we didn't have to throw that out. Um, some of the other features like the HTTP interface, ra rather than that, it's a, it's a drop-in upgrade from MemcacheD instead of being uh, driven by HTTP. Um, and so before I get to this live code thing, which, uh, or this program that I wrote for everyone to run with me, but the firewall's not going to let us, um, I'll tell a little bit of um, kind of I've come to a new realization about working with document databases. Um, and I, I, I have a feeling, I guess now's as good a time as any for me to ask a show of hands, um, who here primarily uses a relational database for their storage? Okay, and then who here uh, primarily uses NoSQL? Wow, so we're almost 50-50. Um, that's interesting. A year ago, it probably wouldn't have been quite there. Maybe in this crowd, but... Uh, so if you are uh, using, like, like, also five years ago, day, day one of a new project, you get the whiteboard out and you start drawing these boxes on the whiteboard and you draw these arrows between them, and some of the arrows have stars at one end. Um, and, it, the, and when the whiteboard gets full, then you can start coding. Um, and so things are different now. When I look at the first day of a project, half of the time it's, let's take the GitHub API and the LinkedIn API and pipe them into the same bucket and then extract some value. And that's a whole different first day of a project. Uh, there's really no point in building a schema for the LinkedIn API data. If you're putting that into a strongly typed storage container, you're just gonna have pain later when they add a new feature and your parser can't parse it. So that to me seems obvious. I see that the people shaking their heads, yeah, like why parse, you know, why, why, why stick the GitHub API data into a fourth normal form, right? That's crazy. Um, where I want to go with that, where I've been kind of playing around with schema lists and, and relaxing with your data, is you should treat your application data the same way. Like, just because it's your app, it's not different from LinkedIn's data, right? You've got like a mobile client and it's throwing some stuff at you. Save that stuff, figure it out later. Um, and when you do it that way, now you have this benefit when you've got a new version of the mobile client and it wants a new feature in the data structure, it just works, right? You don't have to 
um, force everybody to upgrade, right? You don't have to put a, a, a transaction around your, you know, your rolling upgrade of everybody's uh, iPhone app. So uh, I, I think that it's a little scary to say whatever to the user data that's coming in, but it, the benefits for a lot of applications are gonna um, overwhelm the benefit, you know, overwhelm the costs. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to pretend to be, you know, all of you <laughs> at the same time because, because uh, really, uh, I'll, I'll tell the story behind this app. This is, this is what got me um, inspired to come here today. I wanted to build a game. You can go install it if you want to run npm install Twitter fight, and you know, maybe I'll find you later, and we can figure out how you can run it on your laptop or how to fix my firewall. Um, so the idea behind the game, and I'll demo it here in a minute, is uh, you run npm start Twitter fight, and it prompts you to log into Twitter with your credentials and to pick your favorite buzzwords, right? Um, and then it does one of those streaming Twitter searches, and that pulls it all in via Node and just starts counting terms, tokenizing them in the database. And then we query the database to see who has, you know, brought the most tweets. Um, so it's real easy to win by searching for Justin Bieber, but it's also like kind of a, 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 a you know, a mark on you, so. <laughs> um, so I guess I also thought it might be fun for, uh, for you guys to see somebody like me and the JavaScript that I write, because I'm not Substack. Like, my, my JavaScript is, it's not really that good. Um, I love JavaScript, but I mostly spend my time thinking about other things. Um, so I'll take you through a tour of the code real quick, and then we'll run it, and, and you'll see that you don't have to be a, a node expert to get something done in 24 hours. Um, so here is, here's the meat and potatoes of Twitter fight. Like all good programs, uh, you can start reading it at the bottom. So uh, we're going to connect to Twitter, and every time we get some data, we're just going to run this function. Uh, we got some search data. Let's put a little context in here. We use Michael's request library to connect to Twitter via this URL that we made via string concatenation. Um, because if I was really good at JavaScript, I would have used the URL library. But I just string concatenated, so. Um, now, the other thing that's happening is there's just a little bit of setup. We're connecting to memcached via a legacy telnet-based client that's not super fast. That that you know was already on npm. Um, when you first launch the thing, it's going to ask you for your Twitter credentials. So you get all uh, you get all logged into Twitter. It starts streaming that data in, and then uh, and then here we are. We split the data by spaces. It's just a bunch of words, and then for each token in that set of uh, you know in that tweet, we build a key. Right, like a, a, a document name. Um, in this case, T colon foobar. And we go find that in the database and we say, oh, we've seen the word, the term foobar three times. Now we've seen it four times. Uh, so that's all this is. We're uh, loading it, we're making the count, you know, just one bigger and we're saving it back. Um, then we also do that on per user basis. So we have a global word count and a uh, per user word count. And, and that's, kind of, that's kind of it for the client. Um, so thank you, Node.js, for letting me make it that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and run this thing so you guys get a chance to see it. Um, I guess it's worth showing the, the web server. The web server is like a whopping 75 lines of code. And all it does is run a couple of uh, queries against Couchbase. These are the same kind of MapReduce queries that Apache CouchDB does. We just run them on a big cluster. So for each user who's played the game in the last 20 minutes, 
what, what words are you know, the top 20 most popular words from that user, and how many total words have they seen since the beginning of time you know, from that user. Uh, that's, that's all we care about displaying, and, and when we display it, it looks like this. Um, this is the test data I had laying around from last night. If, if the firewalls were cooperating, you guys' names would be on here and you'd be seeing it stream in real time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do, do this my, uh, myself. So it's asking me, you know, what's your Twitter username? Share, I'll use my secondary account with my little known J. Chris A. Thank you, Nojitsu, for writing prompt because I'm not smart enough to write this kind of code. Like, how did you guys not see my password and check this out when I hit enter? That line is gone, or it was. Oh, maybe my font is too big now. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I can pick some buzzwords. Those are the default buzzwords, but um, you know, I found that searching for Twitter on Twitter is a good way to get a lot of volume. Um, what else should I search for? Donuts. Donuts. Starbucks. Starbucks. How about um, PHP? Ooh, PHP. I like that because it's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll just search for, for coffee. And so hopefully this works, right? Sometimes you connect to Twitter and Twitter says, I hate you, and hangs up on you right away. Ooh, look, those tweets are coming in. So here we go. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that that server's running. Um, Oh, that's going to happen sometimes. That's not a problem. That's just Twitter hating me. Um, so here we go. Jake RSA is coming up in the rankings. It's going to catch up with, with my two-year-old daughter if I run it again. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do to make your programs resilient, but usually you do that after you get them to work in the first place, right? Um, and let's go with the default buzzwords here. So this can continue to, uh, to grow. So yeah, hopefully we can all play this game together uh, in a few minutes. Yay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch up and win eventually. Uh, it is a little bit embarrassing. I searched for Justin Bieber yesterday, and it really like overwhelmed all the other results. Um, so, let's see. I hope that that you found it valuable to see how uh, how bad some Node.js can be and have it still work. Um, I can show you sort of what's happening under the hood here. Uh, just a little bit. Click. So there's the load that we're putting on the server. You can see those write spikes are during the times when Twitter is uh, feeding me tweets that match the terms. And that's, uh, that's really all I have. I, I, I do hope that we can you know, Twitter fight together later once I figure out the, the firewall stuff um, because I really want to see what terms you guys would type in. Um, so find me later and help me make my JavaScript better and fix my firewall. Thank you.